This body system is extremely important to maintaining homeostasis, and you've probably never even heard of it. It's called the endocannabinoid system. It was discovered in the early 90s. It's not something that's, um, you know, old. It's relatively new, you know, in the medical field. And it's essential to maintaining homeostasis. The endocannabinoid system can only be stimulated by cannabinoids. You have cannabinoids within your own body, um, endocannabinoids, and then you have cannabinoids that can be from plants called phytocannabinoids. And phytocannabinoids are like CBD and THC. And they work on two different parts of your body, CBD and THC. The endocannabinoid system is ingrained in most organs in your body. The network is vast. It affects things like your serotonin levels, your appetite, digestion, uh, inflammation, and all of these things help balance all the other systems in your body to maintain that balance, which is called homeostasis. A body that is out of homeostasis is a body that incurs disease and death. Um, mild imbalance of homeostasis would be like catching a flu, you know, where your immune system isn't perfectly in balance and, you know, it's weakened because of the flu and the flu kind of takes over and causes you to be sick. So other systems kick in, you know, uh, inflammation happens, you get a fever, you get a cough, you start to feel run down. That is your body out of homeostasis. When the flu is fought off by your immune system and all systems are back in balance, you are in homeostasis. The body is naturally supposed to be in this state of balance at all times. Um, and the endocannabinoid system is crucial to, you know, working on that, to, to helping homeostasis. So how do you stimulate the endocannabinoid system? With cannabinoids. Um, there are cannabinoids in foods, like dark chocolate, but uh, they're in very small amounts, and you'd have to eat lots of them to, to actually stimulate that. Most people are endocannabinoid deficient in some way or another, and that's because most people are not ingesting cannabinoids. So... The way to think about that is if you were vitamin C deficient, you would need to take vitamin C supplements. If you were endocannabinoid deficient, you need to take cannabinoids like CBD. Um, THC is a mind-altering cannabinoid. It does have some medicinal benefits, but it has an, uh, some negatives. It causes anxiety very frequently. Um, it actually is shown to disrupt sleep. It can uh, lead to failed drug tests. You can't operate heavy machinery or operate a vehicle under the influence of THC. So, you know, while there are medical benefits, there are also some downsides of THC. There are no mind-altering effects with CBD. There's, you know, um, no chance that you are going to feel intoxicated with it. You can operate a, um, a vehicle or operate heavy machinery, you know, with uh, just CBD in your system. It, it doesn't create that intoxicating high. Um, so you can get the benefits of stimulating your endocannabinoid system without you know, the feeling of intoxication or failing drug test. Um, to go further into the ECS, the endocannabinoid system, you would have to look at two receptor sites. The first one is CB1 and the second one is CB2. And they're spread out, um, but they are stimulated by uh, neurotransmitters that are released when you take CBD. And those neurotransmitters are AEA and 2AG, or anandamide and 2AG. Anandamide is the bliss hormone. It makes you feel good. Um, it also regulates things like serotonin, which is which you know affects your mood. And those could play into why um, you know CBD helps with anxiety is what the research is pointing to. And because of that, you know people can take CBD for your mood. Um, but serotonin also plays a role in sleep, uh, especially at night for people that have you know their mind and their thoughts racing before they go to bed. This could be something that's really effective for helping that. So, uh, plus the other benefit of it, improving REM sleep. So, you know, the, the fact that uh, anandamide and 2-AG are released and they bind to all these organs and receptor sites in your body shows that CBD isn't a placebo effect. You know, if, if this was um, an unknown mechanism of action of how it was working, if they didn't understand what they call pharmacokinetics when you take something and it starts to interact with your body or the pharmacodynamics, like how your body reacts to it, uh, then yeah, you could say that this thing is, you know, just a, uh, a placebo, but they discovered not only 
that CBD has this entire system that it binds to, that the system is huge, and that there are effects of it. That when you take it, you know, it changes things like serotonin in your body and cortisol, your, your stress hormone. So very clearly demonstrated through st multiple studies that, that uh, this is not a placebo effect, that, that people are taking this and your endocannabinoid system is getting affected. We have an article on our website about the endocannabinoid system. You should check it out. We go a little bit more in depth. They show We show a couple of graphics so that you can kind of get an idea of how this works. And typically, like, I don't want to go too far in depth into these things. One, I'm not a scientist or a neurologist. I'm just, a, you know, the farthest medical training I have is my uh, 18 months of EMT and paramedic. So aside from just enjoying the research and trying to learn about it, I'm limited in my actual ability to interpret scientific knowledge. But uh, you can still understand it to, to some extent, and, and the research is pretty clear. So when I read this stuff, I like to share it, um, but I also don't want to overwhelm people that may not really care about, you know, too much of the in-depth details. I also want you to know that I put in the time and effort to understand what it is that CBD does and how it affects firefighters and what the future is going to bring because of these scientific data points in this research. So I kind of go in the middle. I will put out uh, as much information as I can. You know, we can make it simple and we can make it in depth. So if you want to read some more about it, I have uh, a good article on the website at rescueoncbd.com. And you can go on our CBD 101 page and check out the endocannabinoid system and look at all that stuff. But it is important to know how this stuff works just because if you're taking a supplement like this, you want to know what it's doing inside your body and what the interactions are and how this stuff can help. So putting it out there, I think is a good thing. If you guys have any other questions on it, you can always reach out, DM us on Instagram. You can uh, email us support at rescue1cbd.com, or you can call our support line on our contact page on our website. Anytime you guys want to talk, I love talking about this stuff. I'd like to talk about the research. I'd like to talk about how it will help firefighters. You just reach out anytime and we'll get back to you. And until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Take care of each other and be safe out there.